Hi. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me uh, on, in real life and online how I spin with a knitting needle because I often use my raw alpaca or raw sheep wool on my cheapskate knitting needles in order to avoid getting the lanolin or the dust all over my nice spindles. So, um, but a lot of people are used to top whorls, at least in the U.S., so they're constantly fascinated, I guess, by how they c I can pack a lot of wool onto ba literally just a stick. And so um, I got my inspiration from a design called a French spindle, which if you look at traditional French spindles as well as contemporary reproductions, they are basically a stick um, with a varying uh, width along the length. and um, they typically have a spiral at the top, either carved into the wood or added on by a copper, I think it's called like a pigtail. But I, have, I don't have one of those. I am a little too cheap for that. So what I do is I get a bamboo or wooden knitting needle. Um, the only wooden ones I've seen are bamboo. So I take those, usually about like four dollars a pack for an eight or nine inch one and I take those, I take a steak knife probably shouldn't do that but again I am a cheapskate and I take that knife and I carve a 45 degree angle in the knitting needle like this so you can see there is that groove at the very tip of the needle and it's carved in very slowly so that you don't cut yourself or screw up the tip. Uh, and I basically just make one revolution around the tip at a 45 degrees and making this part be the deepest. So that basically you have the pigtail carved into here. And I got the idea actually for making this from one of um, Lisa Chan's aka Gripping Yarns videos where she shows a French spindle being suspended. However, that's by a cop cap. Again, I don't have one of those. So, I got that. I took that idea, tried out on some needles. I had to destroy a couple because I didn't get the angle correct or the carving the way I liked it until I think the third needle. So, it took a bit of experimentation, but it works. And I am spinning some uh, Shetland roving, actual roving, not just comb top, but the stuff pulled through this. And um, very nice, by the way. I've never felt such soft sh Shetland. It's from Phoenix Farm Fibers on Etsy. But anyway, so you can twiddle, like with the French spindle. Oops, I don't know why I froze. So you can get the twist. So basically you catch the twist into the pigtail and it can suspend itself, not when it's uh, back spiraling though, and suspend itself or you can twiddle. And on one of my needles I've managed to carve the group groove so deep that I can actually use it like a suspend, uh, like a top whorl or a bottom whorl spindle where I can just draft it all the way down to the floor and just let it hang. But I usually don't do that. I usually just do a flick and then I pull. So it's more like a park and draft the way I do it. But it is a cheap way to try out spinning. And I personally think in some ways uh, starting with a twiddling motion like this would be a bit easier for some people, not for everybody, obviously everyone learns a little bit differently, but if you get stuck on a top whorl spindle, um, maybe you can try starting yourself off with a twiddly motion instead, and you don't have to have the carving or a copper cap or a hook or anything, you can literally just use a knitting needle or a crochet hook as is. I prefer needles because it just feels better than having that bumpy crochet needle 
crochet hook on tip. Um, I did try start off trying with a crochet hook and I didn't like it. Plus I like the feel of wood better than metal because this is warmer than um, metal a lot of times. And um, I wish I had learned this way because it took me a long time to try to get drafting while also trying to watch the suspension. And so if you get caught on that, this um, takes away the suspension um, worry so that you only have to worry about putting twist and you don't have to worry about the yarn coming apart all the time if you don't put in enough twist or if you're not drafting at the correct speed. So this is a, it looks slower but once you get the hang of it, it goes by really fast. I think someone described it as, oh shoot, Sergeant someone is her username, but she described it as slower by the hour, faster by the week. And I think she might have been quoting someone else by that, but don't quote me on that. And it is true because, at least for me it's true, because I feel a lot more comfortable carrying around a cheap old knitting needle in my backpack or in my purse and carrying that around and it's a lot more compact and I don't, if, I, if it breaks, spend two bucks more and get another one, no big deal. And compared to if I took my $50 Turkish Jenkins all over, I'd be freaking out and hoping it doesn't break, hoping I don't drop it, so on and so forth. So I kind of just leave that in the house. I know a lot of people do take those types of um, more expensive spindles out and about and they do just fine. But like I said, I'm a cheapskate. I don't want to have to pay for a replacement because knowing my luck, it will break somehow. I'll forget, I'll sit on it, uh, something will happen. So I'd rather just not take the chance. So yeah, that's why I still like to use these knitting needles even though I do have um, actual spindles now and I highly recommend it for anyone who is um, also trying to learn how to spin and is either frustrated by the common methods or just wants to try something new but can't really afford or can't find an antique type spindle or if they just want a quick and easy thing to make. And you could turn this into a, a bottom whorl by, um, by using crochet, one, a crochet hook instead of a knitting needle. And you, then you have the hook there and you can just add, the cop itself adds weight. So once you build up a little cop like this, it just gets heavier and heavier and then pretty soon you, it forms its own whorl basically. So for a short while you just have to worry about the weight but after that it's um, you don't even need to add a whorl or like a bead but you can if you want to and that's um, you see that a lot in uh, support spindle making especially the bottom whorl top whorl sort of do-it-yourself designs uh, usually involve a toy wheel which um, I never personally tried, but a lot of people have recommended those as well. And yeah, I like my Frenchy style cheap skate spindle, so I'm going to stick with these. So yeah, hopefully this is shows you clearly enough what I mean when I say I knit on a knit, uh, knit on a knitting needle. Duh. When I spin on a knitting needle. Um, it's uh, once you get the angle of the carving down, it's really easy to make. I've made about four successful ones so far after the two or three initial failures. And I do love spinning raw wool in raw alpaca. I don't know why people probably think I'm weird and you do have to wash your hands a lot, but the raw wool is really nice for keeping your hands soft, I will admit. I do, li I do like that I don't have to get any lotion. <laughs> I can just spin. 
keep my hands magically soft with sheep. Just don't tell anybody that it comes from sheep. They'll look at you and be like, ugh. You got animal grease on your hands? That's ugh. Because people are weird like that. And yeah, and so carry this around. People will might look at you funny and they might also be interested. I've gotten both reactions. And personally I just really enjoy it. Um, there is there could be a concern about the hands. I know some people might not be able to do this with their fingers because they have arthritis in their fingers or tendonitis or carpal tunnel, they might have there's a whole bunch of things that you could have. So don't if you feel pain in any of your joints or your hands or anything and don't lift your arm up <laughs> like I'm doing. That is not how I normally spin. I'm just trying to get it in the video screen so that you guys can see because I don't really have anywhere else to put the laptop. But yeah, um, just be mindful of your hand when you do this because the motion is a little bit different than what you might be used to with the top wall um, if you use other spindles before. The motion is a bit more similar to um, support spindles, I would say, especially if you do the sort of perk and draft constant back and forth motion that some people do. And so this is more similar to a support spindle. So if you're able to handle support spindles, then you should be able to handle this. But if you try to go with the twiddling thing, um, which is an advantage of knitting needles, you want something very light because once that that spindle is going to be used in your hand a lot if you try to use this method and you're going to also be putting on a lot more weight with your wool. So just be very mindful and um, knitting needles are good for that uh, or crochet hooks because they're typically already very light, especially these bamboo types. Um, I don't know how many grams exactly this weighs, but uh, I'm guessing probably 10, maybe under 10 grams. I don't know, I don't really know mentally what such a small amount feels like, to be honest. And my hands are kind of a little too strong to really care about that because of all the types of digging in the soil and stuff I have to do at my job. And, all, and of course all the spinning I've done so far. So you do build up muscle um, strength in your hands over time and you get used to the movement but that's assuming you don't have any pre-existing conditions and so yeah just be mindful of how your hand feels don't push it because if this is a new movement for you you want to take it slowly and just do it a little bit at a time and eventually you'll get used to it and you might find that this is pretty enjoyable and then the last advantage I feel comes from this sort of spinning is that for me at least like I said, I use a lot of um, raw alpaca, raw wool. You get vegetable matter in it, and this sort of spinning with the suspended, instead of having to draft it all the way down, like with the top wall or a bottom wall, um, it allows me a bit more, um, I guess, intimacy with the yarn that I just made, so that I can, you know, loosen the schlubs to make it more even and pick out the little vegetable matter that I find here and there. Um, I personally don't mind vegetable matter that much, but a lot of people do mind for understandable, completely understandable reasons. And uh, so yeah, this method, um, you're much closer to the yarn often, so uh, you can just pick it along as you go and then wind it back up. And so that's, I guess that would be subjective. Some people's drafting style on a top wall probably makes them also very close to the entire piece of yarn. And, but for me, that was another thing I found uh, useful about this style of spinning. So yeah, that is my um, rambling introduction, introduction to the spinning on a knitting needle situation.